Good morning, dear parents. Uh, welcoming each one of you on this platform. We are here to talk about, uh, as you know, we are here to talk about the career options that your students can choose from. Thankfully, Children's Academy has brought this up for all of you, and we have a brilliant ed tech company with us. Before I begin, I'd like to introduce myself here. My name is Amandeep Kaur, and I'm the school counselor at Children's Academy, Manal Branch. And we are here with Cialpo, which is headquartered in Singapore. And Cialpo is a fast growing global ed tech company and student first career exploration and college application network. With our cutting edge technology, we help students, everyone who supports them, their counselors, parents, university recruiters, to think differently about the options in an interestingly cluttered and confusing space. So they can take the best next steps towards realizing their ideal future. What is he also doing to do for us and our school students? Um, like we all know, we need something which is reliable, unbiased as an information and resources for our students to take up aptitude test courses, colleges and no more scholarship programs. And this Cialfo seemed as the best fit course, has the best fit courses for our students. We have tied up with Cialfo in order to have an understanding with all the confusion that we have, what our children must choose. I think all of you know that you want your students to select something which is the best for them. Hence, we are here today and we are going to have this talk with Mr. Paul and Ms. Johnny, to whom I'd like to introduce now. Mr. Paul has been in this industry for 10 years with history of experience in ed tech industry and currently a client experience team at Cialpo with a mission to make education accessible to millions of students. This time with grade nine and 10 students, we also have Ms. Janvi Ruparel, is the senior manager of counseling at Cialfo. She's passionate about working with students through their high school journey to college and believes in making an impact on the lives of students. She is graduated from Mumbai University and holds a certificate from Symbiosis Center of Distance Learning in Guidance and Counseling in Education. She comes with a decade of experience in working with students across multiple academic curricula, family backgrounds, and their diverse academic goals. We welcome Cialfo on the platform of Children's Academy, and we are looking forward to this session with all the parents and the students. We are looking forward to gain knowledge about Career Talk and the onboarding of how we can access Cialfo. What are we going to get out of this entire portal of Cialfo that we have? Uh, over to Ms. Chandi. Thank you, ma'am, for introducing us. Uh, we look forward to uh, interacting with all the students and parents present here today. But just a few instructions before we begin. The flow of events is going to be that we will have uh, Paul from our team. He will be walking you through the onboarding and how you can effectively use Cialpo uh, through the child's journey and how the parents can be involved. And every feature of Cialpo that will be useful to the students will be covered by Paul followed by a presentation on emerging careers by myself and uh, through the course of this presentation over the next hour or so what we encourage you to do is try and post all your questions in there's no right or wrong question i really encourage all the students and parents to make the most of this opportunity and post your questions in and we can take them through the course of uh, you know either the presentation or usually what we do is we have the questions post both the presentations are done, but we encourage you to post them out and uh, hand it over to Paul to get this started. And then I will be uh, presenting once Paul is done with his part of the presentation. So over to you, Paul. Thank you, Janvi. Thank you, uh, Amandi, for a, a wonderful introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, everyone present here, especially the parents and the students also for taking out their precious time in joining for the sessions. I welcome everyone uh, for the CR4 student launch session. 
So basically, uh, what I'm going to start today is uh, there will be it will be in two parts. First of all, I'll I'll take you through a small brief introduction uh, of presentations, and then I will switch over to the live platform. How would the features will be available uh, lively to all the students? Okay. So allow me to share my screen with the presentation. Just a minute. Can you all see my screen? Yes, Paul, we can. Thank you. So basically, first of all, what is CL food? That's a, one of the best, you know, the first question that comes to anyone when we're talking about the CL for student launch sessions. So CL is a career guidance as well as college application platform company which helps students uh, not only with their uh, college application, but with the entire complete career guidance portfolio. So how the name we got, uh, the meaning of, uh, or else the name suggests like it, CL4 means Citius, Altius, and Fortius, which means stronger, higher, and faster. And we have taken this from an Olympic motto. That's a name suggest. And we are in a mission with uh, to make higher education accessible to 100 million students in a very uh, recordable time. That's what we're looking at. And for this purpose, we uh, are associated with a lot of schools, uh, more than 2,000 schools across the globe. We have our uh, presence uh, across the globe. Uh, we have our office headquartered at uh, Singapore. Apart from Singapore head, uh, office, we have an office in Noida for, from Delhi, and we also have in uh, China as well as in uh, us so begin with uh like the stakeholders what are the stakeholders that we are uh, connected with in terms of uh, fulfilling this mission yes for the counselors the teachers the students the parents and the guardians how about the counselors it's a platform it's a very wonderful platform it's a digital platform that for the counselors to you know track all the students in one single platform uh, it's it's complete it's a it's a college guidance technology as simple as streamlined possible so it's a time saving approach to work with students for counselors it will be uh, it will be very convenient to handle everything from the single platform itself we have students uh, we have teachers also on the platform because teachers play a very important role very vital role during the application process the teachers help the students by providing letter of recommendations to the universities that they are applying to we also have uh, the parents guardians the, the first uh, kind of support especially all the parents we all uh, the, the students can create the login credentials for the parents and parents very well can track everything what the student is going through in the platform about the applications about the journey and everything because parents are also a, 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 a team which guides the students the first hand of guidance for the students yes with students we are on a mission to make college application and career readiness simple efficient and accessible to every student and i mean to say that uh, it's a platform for you to completely research about the universities about the courses available in the platform and to track and submit the application not only by submitting it also by tracking what is the status of your application which has been submitted uh, with the help of the counselors in detail if i speak about uh, the features for uh, the CR for students. These are the features that's available. We have a wide variety of global search, CR for Gannett scholarship, assessment, direct apply, student education advisors, college pairs. When I'm talking about the college search, it's a platform where more than 14,000 universities currently uh, from across more than 80 plus countries data is there. And you can research about the universities, courses, colleges, with a lot of filtration available. Simply, you just have to filter it with the country, with the courses, and it will be easy for you to find out what university fits you the best. And what are the, uh, you will get the detail of the university uh, after you know entering into that particular portal. And that complete information has been provided in the global search. Again, uh, I would be taking through uh, the live platform, so you will get a better understanding after this presentation. 
we also have CRFO's Garanda Scholarship. Basically, we have two scholarship. One is CRFO's Garanda Scholarship, and one is the other. The other one would be uh, the university based on scholarship, which uh, which you know is applicable based on certain merits. And uh, the student counselors as well as the university engagement counselors would be able to help you out. Like, what are the relevant scholarship would be applicable for you all? We have basically assessment for the students. Basically, there are three kinds of an assessment which we would be speaking in detail uh, during the uh, during the live platform and also in the uh, presentation that's going to be covered by Janvi. There are a lot of universities. When I'm talking about universities details in, in the platform, as I mentioned earlier, more than 13 or 14,000 universities, there are a lot of universities, more than 600 plus universities that you can directly apply from this platform itself. It can be to the in, uh, within India or outside the country, like UK, Europe, US, anybody, and that too in less than a 15 minutes. The application process is simple, and we would be helping out students to fill up these applications and submit their application to their uh, dream universities. We also have student education advisors who would be helping uh, the students in terms of filling the applications and all. But that would come towards a later on later on stage when the students are. Uh, you know, uh, completely made up the mind, completely selected the universities during the application process. College fairs. Uh, there are a lot of uh, events and a lot of uh, webinars and seminars keeps on happening in the CR4 platform where, where you can get the, uh, a lot of knowledge from these webinars. It can be pertaining to any particular kind of topic. Uh, it can be pertaining to any kind of university. So again, that detail, I'll show you the event uh, feature in the live platform. Now, first of all, what is and how about the core platform? That is something very important. Now, how students are going to uh, log in into the platform. So basically, as of now, I have not yet sent the registration details. We have created the login credentials for all the ninth and 10th standard students for all the uh, four brand, I mean, all the four, all the three branches. So after this session, once the session is done for today, we'll be shooting out the uh, registration detail, uh, registration link to uh, all the students. Uh, I would request your students to check out your emails. Uh, if you are get, if you're not finding out the registration link in your inbox, I would request you to please check on the spam folders as well as the promotional folders to find out this uh, registration link which has been shoot out from CRFO. Now, how to go about it? Uh, request you to kindly look for an email from notification at CRFO with the subject called "Getting Started with CRFO." That's a subject name. I would I'm I'm requesting again to check your inbox. The school email will be sending it to the school email address, the school email address of the students for which we have created the login credentials. And if you are finding it uh, within the uh, inbox, it's good. You just have to click on the link. You would not be provided any password. You will have to create a password at the first go. It's very simple and easy procedure. If you are not if you're unable to find the in uh, email, kindly check with uh the spam folders or else promotional folders all right once you log into the platform i will also request everybody to bookmark that page and save your password so that it will be easy for you whenever you are logging in the next time so that you don't forget the password at the next time when you log in so the easy procedure for every student would be after registration after logging into the platform kindly bookmark that page one thing second thing kindly save the password for your easy convenience all right. Under any uh, uh, under any situation, if you have any concerns with the login credentials, anything, you can please, please feel to reach out to your school counselors. They would be helping you out in getting the registration links. Now, yes, what to do after logging in? That is the first thing that we have to do. Like, OK, the first thing is you have to completely fill in the profile for us to understand completely about every student. Now, this profile updation is very simple. It's very easy procedure. I'll take you one by one, uh, step by step, how to fill in these procedures. It's it's as simple as like if you are creating any login credentials, any kind of uh, social media accounts, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So what we do generally once we log in, we fill up our profile with the photographs, with all the inf relevant informations so that it's easily accessible to everybody. There will be assessments uh, for you, as I mentioned in my uh, briefly there will be three kinds of assessment i'll take you through that and about the college search facility there are uh, more than 14000 universities where you can search out about the universities and the colleges and the courses that is available the details about each universities what are the entrance examinations available what are the scoring uh, what are the what are the you know 
uh, chances of getting admission to that particular university, what's the fees for that particular courses that you're looking at, what is the deadlines, what is the application deadline, as well as when is this program going to start. So everything detailed information would be available in the platform. As I mentioned, there is also one of the few very beautiful feature, direct apply. Again, this is going right now for the 10, 9th and 10th grades. It will not be right now because you are uh, just planning it. But yes, it's an, just an introduction to you that there is a feature called direct apply when you are applying to the universities, when you start applying to the universities. It's very simple procedure. Again, uh, as I mentioned, there will begin the scholarship, visa service, uh, most of the application fees that is available from the direct apply university would be waived off and we as a team would be helping you out in filling this application forms during your application time there are two kinds of scholarship that would be available for the students who are applying to the universities from the cl4 platform again not now but when you are reaching the 11th and 12th grade there are certain other benefits also so this is how basically the journey would look like i'm not elaborating on my presentations rather i would directly uh, go into the uh, live platform uh, uh can you all see my platform please can you please give, can you give me information yes Paul. all right yes Paul. thank you so this is the live platform so when every student is logging into the first time this is the page that you will be receiving it. the first page would be the dashboard dashboard would basically the summary of your cl4 account which would have personalized recommendations uh, a lot of other things so i will come to it in details but before about before going ahead the first thing which i mentioned is about filling up of your cl4 profile so here you can see that my profile is shown as complete so this is a demo account for me to show you all so basically when we check when we when we're asking about the profile updations it's all very simple it's super easy procedure nothing rocket science it's all about the personal information which you will be filling in the application details you'll be filling in the preferences which the, the i mean to say the preferences of uh, your universities or courses that you're looking at uh, so you would be fitting, uh, you'll be, you know, filling up these informations. There is information on the test, the contacts for your parents and everything. So let, let's go one by one. First of all, the first one, the personal informations, when you're logging for the first time, there will be very limited informations as of now available as per the data that has been collected. It may be just the name and the email address. I would request everybody to fill up further information, like general information, education, overall, everything. You can check the email address. You can select the time zone. Uh, you can select the regions where you are interested. If you have started planning, because this is in time when you have just started planning, it's not about completely. But yes, when you have started planning, regions that you are interested in. So the other informations, everything. Make sure those informations which have been asked with a red asterisk mark would be mandatory. And we would also request students to upload their photograph so that when your counselor is checking your profile, it will be easy for uh, them to understand and identify you. Make sure uh, that whenever you are in filling up any informations, after filling up the information, you hit the save information button or else information would not be captured or else saved. That is about the personal information. So once you fill up the personal information, this is how it would look like your mobile number, time zone, citizenship, the country of residence, uh, your current grade and high school graduation year. The graduation year for each student would be the year when you are passing out from the 12th standard. So especially if it is a 10th standard student, their graduation year would be 2025. And for the uh, ninth standard student for the ninth graders their graduation year would be 2026 that's how it will be going on then you will be filling up the application details uh click on the edit informations you can select the undergraduate type you can select the application year as the as well as and when you start filling up the application so probably that can be the next year you can mention that year enrollment year would be the year when you are passing out the 12th grade you can also mention the academic interest, uh, which all academic interest you have. And based on that, you can save the information for that purpose also. Then comes the preference fit, which is also one very important for us to know, because based on the preference fit, C Alpha with the help of AI technology would be recommending certain universities uh, and colleges to you based on the preferences that you're filling up and the other information that is getting captured from your personal profile. All right. When I'm talking about the personal feed, 
obviously you are not all, all in nine and ten leaders but you can start preparing for i mean start planning uh from now only like what how important is the overall ranking for the universities that you're looking at would you like to prefer your graduation in a public public university or private university or does doesn't that doesn't make any sense so it's all about the preferences that you are going to mention it here uh how important is it for you so if you have already a planning like i would like to pursue my graduation within the country then you can mention that's least important and you can mention it as india if it is not if you are planning uh, to do your graduation abroad you can choose up the country accordingly and based on that we would be we would be suggesting certain recommendations in the in the dashboard itself so about uh, the further questions you can mention your budgets for your graduation purpose so all these simple simple informations regarding the academic location financial the other facilities that you're looking for the university so everything you can fill up here and once it is done you can fill up complete then your preference preference fit again would be shown as complete there is also one more option called test uh, i mean to say when you are reaching towards the graduation time that is towards the 12th you'll be uh, starting you know attending a lot of uh, uh, English language proficiency examinations if you're especially planning for abroad or else any, any kind of entrance examinations if you had participated or else whenever you are participating and once you are ready with the marks you can simply go to the CR4 profile under the test you can simply add the test select the type of test that you had, part uh, you had done you can scroll down and then you can enter the enter the details of that particular information and it will be looking like this if you have not participated and if you're willing to participate, you can always register for that kind of a test from the platform itself. Just simply click on that. That will take you to that particular page where you can book your appointment and you know uh, you can participate in that test. And once you have the marks, come back and enter your, uh, enter your marks and other details under the test. Contact information. Students can add up to the maximum two uh, contact informations. They can add up to your parent, mom, dad, or any other guardians. And uh, with the help, with this registration, we we would be also be able to create the login credentials for the parents if they would like to have a uh, login credentials for the CL4 account and want to track down the student's journey in the CL4. Then that can be easily possible. Just fill up your parents' information again here. Your counselor, whosoever is assigned to you, would be shown here extracurricular activities this is one of the very important informations uh, that is required because nowadays you all understand a university is not only look at the academics they look at your profile holistically so they would definitely look at any kind of extracurricular activities that you have participated it can be within the school it can be outside the school that doesn't matter but yes any curricular activities where you have participated especially from ninth grade onwards so this will give you a chance to understand yes these are the kind of activities that is giving an importance so we can start participating and creating our own profiles so once you start create uh, once you start participating in any kind of activities extracurricular activities once it is done you can select on the activities whether it is volunteering whether it is internship whether it is anything else and fill up the information. You can mention the activity name. If you held any positions, you can mention the position and also the grades in which you have participated. You can calculate the tentative working hours per week. If you held any positions, you can mention that. Or else, if you have further details about that participations and if you have any documents or certificates, you can upload that. That will boost your resume building. So there is no limit uh, to the extracurricular activities that can be added. You can add on as much as, uh, as you want. The beauty part is once you have added all these informations, there is something called resume builder. Okay, so you don't have to create your resume separately. Say, uh, take a lot of time. So once you have filled up all the informations regarding the academics and everything, regarding uh, the regarding the extracurricular activities your resume can automatically create it just simply click on this particular tab which is mentioned here with create resume when you're clicking it you can see by default a resume is created with the help of the information that have been filled in there are further informations which you can uh, check you can cross verify whether in the information the address everything is correctly mentioned there is something called skills so if you possess any kind of extra skills okay so what you can do is come and select the 
kind of skills that has been assigned there you can select you can scroll down a lot of lot of informations are there once you enter your uh, expertise in that it will be immediately reflected can you see that how i'm removing it and once it is done it will be Im immediately reflected on the uh, on the uh, resume itself there is an option called languages you can add on the languages which you are known to like maybe there are a lot of students who understand more than two or three or even four or five languages so that add on a boost to your resume building so you can add on that in that information also so once that information is again filled in that will be immediately fetched up the beauty part is this is in a downloadable format it can be downloaded in a pdf or in a document format which you can edit edit it at any point of time later on stage so that was all about the profile building so i would request i'm repeating once again uh, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm you know focusing more is because the more and more that maximum information is filled up it's always better for us to understand what kind of uh, to read about everything from your profile itself regarding your i'm repeating these are the information which you need to fill in it's all super easy personal informations application details preference fit test contacts extracurricular activities which is very important that will be adding uh, complete details to your profile once this is done and then you can go to the universities when you start not now i understand that you all are been in ninth and 10th graders but still we i'm just showing the features that is available there is something called university when you're clicking on university that will take you to the university the college's details that is available in the platform if you remember i have mentioned that there are more than 14000 universities that is available in the platform it is segregated based on on direct apply i mean which all universities you can apply directly from the platform based on the rankings of the universities on global basis on different country basis and then you can find out the details of the universities uh, on country basis can you say this universities uh, based on the canada united kingdom so that's how it goes there is also filtration possible there is a there are various filter tabs that is available so let's say if you are starting just planning, if you, you uh, this is the age where you will be starting your plannings. It's not that you will be applying, but when you are planning and if you want to search about the universities, let's say I'm a person, uh, I'm a student who who, uh, who is planning for his graduation uh, in India, as well as let's say in uh, I'm also looking at United Kingdom. So, so that's my two country preferences that I would like to pursue my graduations. So what you can do is simply just uh, search the region apply the filter that will this 14,000 universities would be narrowed down to these many universities again you can see there is some uni fit which is mentioned so this is based on your academics uh, details that you have filled in the interest the profile that you have filled in and based on the searches that you are doing so that will also show you the detail of that university for example if I'm clicking on a particular kind of university that will give detailed about that particular university it can be the brochure it can be the brochure it can be the video photographs about that university the details of that university the ranking of that particular university uh the application portals the details general details everything would be mentioned like what are the uh entry to that uh courses that is available the fees that is relevant to that university so every information would be provided here there would be details of the courses that like individual universities have different different kinds of courses it can be in india or any other country so you can see a particular university or particular college what are the type of courses that is available in that particular university all right then you can see the deadlines again uh based on like what are the application deadline when you would be reaching grade 12 and you'll be just start planning everything you can add the courses here i'm not going in depth for you especially right now also uh, you can start creating a list of universities that you would like to uh, you know look when you reaches that 12th grade so for that basically there are three kinds of list available for every students so the three kinds of list is when i'm talking about there is short list that's uh, sorry long list short list and applying list so initially students start uh, segregating or else uh, you know start choosing the universities and moving the universities on the long list and within the discussion of the parents with the counselors with us you can gradually once you finalize so these are universities are moving to the shortlisting you can again move that university to the shortlist option and then finally to the applying options you can keep that planning everything ready and keep everything ready start preparing your planning 
So that's all about the universities. I'm not covering much on the direct apply part, which because you're all ninth and 10th. There is another feature, which is task and assessment. And you're clicking on task and assessment. If there are any tasks signed by your counselors to all of you, that would be available under this particular tab, task and assessment. If any task has, has been assigned by a counselor, it will be visible here. There will be three kinds of assessment, as I mentioned uh, for you all. So once your school counselor assign any kind of assessment to you, it would be visible under task and assessment under the assessment part. There are basically three kinds of assessment, uh, the personality one, the learning and productivity, the personality intelligence. So you can take this assessment when it has been only been assigned to you and you can take it at any point of time, not only in school, you can take this assessment at home time at home. But we would suggest you to complete the assessment at one go, at least one assessment in one go that gives a complete information. Once the info, once the assessment is done, the reports would be immediately available in a PDF format. Also, the report would be available in the platform in a clickable format. Unfortunately, I have not started it. So once you start the uh, start taking any kind of assessment, it would move like this way. And uh, this would gradually take 15, 20 minutes to complete one kind of an assessment. Once you complete that assessment, the report would be generated in a PDF format. So when I'm talking about personality, this is a particular, this is a particular uh, assessment uh, that gives idea about your personality, about your personality. I mean to say what kind of a person you are, whether you're an introvert, whether you're an ent uh, extrovert. So what kind of a person you are, a detail about your personality uh, that you get once you submit this assessment. And then you have the second one as a learning and productivity. So this assessment will help you understand in, in which factors you would like, uh, in which you learn more, like uh, whether you are a student who would like to learn more in lights or during the uh, on daytime or during the nighttime, early morning, or are you a student who is interested in studying as a group? So what suits you the best? What's your uh, best strength and weakness? Everything would be uh, completely available from the learning and productivity assessment. And I'm talking about the third one, the personality intelligence. Now, this assessment basically help you uh, uh, in getting a visibility of which courses or careers you should opt in. So based on this assessment, it will be helpful for you to take a further call. OK, now this is not only the complete uh, decision making uh, thing. This is just a tool. This is just an assessment for you to understand everything. Again, you can discuss with your parents as well as with the counselors. And also, if any support is required from our side, we'll be very happy to help you out. That's all about the task and assessment. So make sure uh, the, your counselors would be assigning you assessment and they will be informing you that particular assessment has been assigned and that would be available under the assessment tab. Events. As I mentioned in my earlier presentations, when I'm talking about events, there are a lot of events keeps on happening in the CL4 uh, platform. It's easily available to all the students. Whenever there is any event happening, Okay, it can be pertaining to any university, any kind of topic. For example, um, uh, there is a university of Sheffield who is going to uh, have a session on 12th of January. So it's easy for you all to uh, see this and register for this particular kind of event. So what does it mean to study engineering? So this is a particular university who is going to give a webinar on this particular one. You can register for the sessions. And you can also see who is the speaker for this particular kind of event and get your learning. So it can be like, so these kind of events keeps on happening in the CL4 and it is available under the events tab. So if there are any upcoming events, the details would be available here with the detail of the university that is providing, the topic that they are providing, when that particular session is going to happen, and you can simply register it. It's all free of cost for all the students. And you can take the maximum learnings from these kind of events that all happen. Unfortunately, if you could not attend any kind of event or session, and if you want to uh, check out the recording, if the recording is available at any point of time, for example, Amity University has conducted certain uh, events here. So that was past sessions. Amity University has conducted an event on emerging career in the 4th September 2021. That's a past session. So you can at any point of time go and check the recording of that available, uh, that particular event. Who you can look out for the speaker and then get the fun, uh, complete learning from that. So that is also one of the event uh, that is available. Then one of the features, these are some of these are certain features which I wanted to show uh, everybody. 
So as I mentioned earlier, this would be there will be personalized recommendation based, based on your, your profile, uh, academic in, information that you're filling in up. There will be, uh, so if you have added, started adding any universities that is up to your interest and any event that is going to happen that will immediately pop up, like what are the kinds of events that is going to happen that will be available on your dashboard itself. All right. If you have started making a list of universities, again, that would be available. So basically, dashboard is, as I mentioned earlier, dashboard would be the summary of your entire profile. So that's all about uh, the base one, the introduction that I want to give on the platform. Uh, two more important things which I want to focus now. There is also, uh, if you go to the right hand side, there is something called my settings. If you click on my settings, there is two help centers. One is a help center and one is chat with CRP. Help center, if you're clicking on help center, it's a clickable step-by-step -step procedure. If your students are stuck up at any point of time during uh, using this platform, you can simply click on this particular uh, tab. That will give you step-by-step -step information how to move ahead. So it's also one of the help article for you. The other help article is chat with Cialfo. So there is a chat with Cialfo tab, which is 24 into 7 available. So whenever you have any concerns if you are exploring the platform during the evening hours or at your school and if you uh, want to get an immediate answer immediate answer to your questions you can simply go to go to this particular tab chat with cialfo click on send a message once you uh, uh, give up any uh, questions immediately there will be a response that would be coming up whenever the counselor is available and this chat is available 24 into 7 so you can see how fastly you are getting a response from our counseling team so this is one of the best help article again for you any questions pertaining to this particular platform and if anything regarding to the careers anything regarding to the universities any questions you have please feel to go and uh, put it on your chat box you can question you can ask for the chat and we can simply chat it you will be able to get the complete understanding will get you, your queries will be able to uh, will be addressed from here uh, I think that's all about the base introduction. Uh, I'm handing over to you, uh, Janvi. Over to you. Thank you so much, Paul, for this detailed information. Uh, I just want to add to what Paul has already covered. Uh, for students, it is very, very important to remember that when you are looking at, you know, your higher education or high school journey, Everything from your grade 9 to 12 is going to be important. Since we have students from grade 9 and 10, it is important to be able to start early. Universities expect you to be well informed and they expect you to make a well informed decision when it comes to your careers. Now, what does that mean? A lot of times students say that they may not necessarily in the 9th or 10th grade know what they want to study at the end of the grade 11 or 12 right so it's okay to not know an answer but sometimes knowing say the streams what what are the subjects that you're interested in what are your strengths finding out all of that information is extremely important through your high school journey now very quickly i'm going to share my screen and what we are going to discuss today are emerging careers this is going to help you understand sorry so this is going to help you understand what are the kind of careers that exist currently and what is it that you can explore when it comes to different kind of fields. At this point in India, we usually have careers focusing within certain frames. And even when you're going overseas, a lot of countries will expect you to know the larger scheme of, you know, what stream or what subject you really want to study, right? So what, what I am going to do over this presentation is introduce you to certain career clusters, discuss emerging careers. There's going to be a fun quiz for all of you. Okay, uh, steps to choose a career, uh, what are some of the emerging careers in various streams, uh, tips to consider, what are the mistakes you should avoid, certain CRF features that you can explore that, um, you know, Paul has already talked about. I'll just be reiterating some of them through my presentation. Now, what are career clusters? Very often, uh, you know, we, we know what we want to sort of ultimate do, ultimately do as a career goal, but there are always clusters that they're classified into, right? 
So there are multiple clusters that um, we have here on our screen right now, which covers everything from design to hospitality, to agriculture, to information technology, to science, to maths, to arts, and a lot more, right? So generally, when you're looking at careers, it will be classified in one of these clusters. Now, Ken, I'm going to be walking you through a quiz. Can some of the students uh, take a minute and the team can inform me if they're responding? Do you know what this stands for? Like what emerging career does this image represent to you? Ma'am, do let me know if we have any answers that are being posted I, I will, by the students. Yes, I will let you know. I'm waiting for it. Come on, students, you all can put in your uh, responses there. I we just can, have a few, uh, few images that will pop up. So the expectation is that when you look at the image, uh, what is the first thing that comes to mind or what do you think that represents? The replies okay. we're receiving is data science, technology. OK. Right. So uh, around that, uh, what we're trying to introduce as a new emerging career is cybersecurity. As we are all aware with the current situation that anything and everything that you put out over social media or once it's uploaded, it always stays there, right? Now, do we understand the repercussions? Is it important to share all these pieces of information? Yes or no? And how do you tackle a situation? We come across a lot of frauds that have been identified you know a lot of people claiming to be from a bank or you receive qr codes that may be fraudulent it's very important to be careful of all of these things and it is important to be aware about cyber security as a career it's a very very important aspect that uh, exists in today's time the next image is this one so uh, students i would encourage you to post your answers Anybody that's responding differently? Yeah, I'm checking on the responses. Nothing as of yet, but I'm sure we'll be putting up. That is nuclear science that has come up. Okay. Okay, so when I look at it, yes, science is a form, a big part of the kind of streams that, uh, you know, students are exploring. Now, science has above and beyond just engineering and medicine. It is important to understand all the kind of careers that uh, exist in the sciences field, OK? Now, does anybody know what this represents? There Anybody are some responses here. There yeah. is White House employees, biochemistry, biochemistry, biochemistry is what B tech, agriculture and microbiology, bioengineering, biochemistry, agricultural sciences, medicine, biotechnology, bot botany, agricultural sciences. Again, excellent. So, so just revolving around all of that horticulture is an emerging career that will you know uh, include agricultural sciences now what are the differences in agriculture sciences and horticulture agriculture sciences may only do well, you know deal with vegetables but horticulture will you know include so much more in the different kind of crops fruits etc right so that's an emerging career now this i'm sure all of you are going to get this is this sure is a no brainer to put it this forward. is a no brainer <laughs> let's see and it's and it's going to get the fastest responses so far yeah yeah and that one particular response gaming all over esports has come up perfect gaming still that was bang on i think that was an easy one mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so esports there are esport teams uh you know that exist i know a lot of times with all the parents here uh, this becomes a concern because you feel that your you know, children are too much into gaming. 
as far as everything is within a limit to start off with it's great to be introduced there is a lot of scope in the esports uh, you know as a career option so it can definitely be in, you know explored however for students that feel that this gives you a reason to endlessly keep gaming 24/7 I don't think that's true. It has to be very, very controlled, and it has to be looked at from a career perspective. And what is it that you're trying to achieve, rather than just endlessly gaming, right? Now, this one uh, should also give it away, students. What do you think this represents? Anybody that can post answers to this? Yeah, I'm checking for some and they've started to come. Social media, social media influencer, Facebook, social media, hospitality is what we receive. So perfect. Again, a lot of similar answers. This was a giveaway. Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, of what we do or how we live or how much that, uh, you know, social media has become a part of our life. It has only grown and increased in the most uh, recent times, right? Earlier, um, social media did not exist. Like when I was in, say, school and I was a student like any one of you, the scope of social media did not even exist then. Internet was limited. Mobile connections were just coming up. So the situation was very different to how much we have uh, you know, changed in the last couple of years. It is important to remember that social media how do you manage it? What does SEO mean? Um, you know, it doesn't only mean that you have to end up posting everything that you're doing. A lot of it has to be planned posting. Uh, there has to be a strategy around it. What is the social media campaign that you're planning? So there is a lot that goes into social media. You see a lot of influencers that make a great career out of social media. There are social media agencies that exist. So, Yes, this is great. And there is a lot that goes on around social media management as well. Anybody can guess that? The next image is on your screen. Uh, so I would encourage you to post your answers. I think the image has. Uh... Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about okay, that. We have uh, we have answers like cloud computing, bond market, cloud data science, cloud computing, cloud computing. Perfect. That was that was a great guess, students. So with uh, with like I just said, that social media has evolved a lot of uh, careers with regards to computers, computing. There is so much scope that has come up in cloud computing as well, right? And there, there is a lot to explore rather than only and only computer science as a subject. I would say when you're looking at cloud computing, everybody has the internet at their disposal. Everybody has a great platform like Cialfo that the school is encouraging you to use, right? Make use of these resources, research universities, read a little bit about the modules taught in cloud computing, what is it that gets covered? I would encourage you to do this level of research in ninth and 10th so that you understand what is it that gets covered. Do you like this? There are free online courses that you can do. So there is a lot of scope for you to explore for a deeper understanding rather than just understanding these superficially and just knowing all these terms, right? It is important to understand what each of these pertain and what is it that you can work towards to reach these careers now the next image is on your screen again students there is uh, online education is one okay. of the responses medicine um, medicine again online healthcare healthcare technology Okay. So, of course, uh, uh, it was a lot of everything what everybody said. So app development, we know that a lot has changed over the last couple of years as I covered. The access to applications on your phone has only increased multi-fold over the last couple of years. So from what we could do on a mobile phone back in 2012, 
to what we can do now in the last 10 to 11 years has drastically changed the scope of the system, right? There is an app for everything. You wear a watch connected to your phone. It's going to tell you everything that you do in terms of your pulse rate can be checked. If you're walking, if you're working out, how much of it is what you're using. Everything right now is on an application and easily accessible. Podcasts exist on a phone. Uh, you can check multiple resources, multiple ebooks, e newspapers. Everything is accessible to the world through an application, either on the computer or on your phones. Times have really changed. So, what is it that you are really looking out for? And last but not the least, this is again um, an interesting image. I'd love to see all the answers that students come up with. Hospital, we're receiving answers like hospitality, cooking, hotel management, hotel management, etiquettes, hotel management, culinary specialities, etiquettes. That's what we're receiving, hospitality. Excellent. So, yes, while it involves all of this, uh, food blogging has become a major career in the recent past. Do students know what food blogging really means? It's really, really important to know, as I covered social media management as a career option, food bloggers, lifestyle bloggers, right, travel bloggers, these all have, you know, scaled up in the last couple of years and built amazing careers on this. Now, what does food blogging really mean? It's, it's important to understand that it is a wholesome experience that you are trying to provide. Today, there are restaurants, there are travel companies, there are, uh, you know, all of these opportunities that are available to influencers, right? To be able to make that uh, impact. What does an influ influencer essentially do? It creates all of these pieces of information that is accessible to you. And they talk about the kind of experience you can have at a restaurant, uh, you know, about a particular dish that they have tried, about a particular airline that they flew by, a particular location that they visited, and what is it within that, um, you know, within a particular budget, how many days, uh, all of these things are included by travel bloggers, food bloggers, lifestyle bloggers, right? So these are important careers that currently exist. And so much has changed. Like I said, when I was a student, all of these career options may not have necessarily existed. So, you know, and students now have the opportunities to look at esports. The only kind of sports that we ever knew of was, uh, you know, the ones that you probably play in school, that, you know, that are the max. The one of the most popular sports in India is cricket, followed by hockey. And those are the ones that you saw most scope for. But now, with the emerging times and growing opportunities, these are multiple options that are available to your students. Now, when it comes to choosing a career, what are the top five, uh, you know, pointers to keep in mind? According to me, the top one is discovering your interests and talents. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of you oftentimes think that an academic strength is always going to translate into an interest or it may also be part of your talent, but then you could have multiple interests, talents as, as well as academic strengths. Sometimes they could align, sometimes they could be different. Identifying these are very, very important. Now, when you look at, uh, you know, the subjects offered to you at school, when you are looking at the multiple subjects, you can, what I would encourage you to do is try and identify what is it that is your strength. Now, when you're looking at English, is it that, according to you, speaking is something that you like? Is it interacting with people that you like? Is it public speaking that you like? English could be an overall umbrella as an academic strength, but what is it within that that you're looking at, right? What are your interests? What are your talents with regards to your academic strength? Uh, strengths can also be explored. Identify five of your greatest personal and social strengths, right? Public speaking can be a social strength. Personality, uh, you know, there could be multiple personal traits that you have. 
what is it that you know you have in the sense uh, of empathy you know are you a people's person what are all the kind of strengths and what is it that you're trying to identify and focus on to make a career out of exploring trending careers and choosing carefully and thoughtfully we spoke a lot about the emerging careers now you have to understand that all of these could be trending careers but not all of them can check a box for every student and it is important to realize that just because um, you know you have a lot of friends and there is a lot of peer influence it's not necessary that you and your friends may have the same career choices interests talents strengths you have to focus on what is it that is important for you and of course to sum all of this up how are you going to get the most accurate information your counselor it is important to have that discussion with your counselors at school cialfo is an additional tool that is available to you so additional to what is available at school you already have that push from us you have the platform there is a lot that is available make the most of it while choosing your career now introduction to career streams it is very important because you are at this uh, you know uh, you are at this space in your careers or you know your journey as a student where understanding this is extremely important because if not in 9th and 10th you will uh, you know if you're looking at traditional systems there may be a classification or an overall classification that will come at uh, you know in some point or the other during your high school journey so science commerce and arts are the broader terms now what is it that we are covering within these so the science is going to either have pure science there's going to be uh, technology there's going to be engineering maths and together these stand for stem related courses now uh, when you look at uh, stem related courses there is a misconception that every part is only going to be a science one but when we look at the next few slides there are even careers in sports or there are careers in design that could qualify at universities as stem careers now there is a, a time where you require to focus your energy and uh, look at all of these options that are available to you and understand the broader terms okay now when you look at commerce people only associate commerce with business or finance right but business also has streams within it that call for management marketing production mass media uh, there is a sports uh, business uh, you know career so there is a lot of aspects with regards to businesses uh, that exist shark tank is a leading show that is telecast uh, to a lot of the um you know audiences today now what is it that you are trying to look at it it's very interesting and i would encourage you to watch the show and see what is the strategy that people build around their businesses uh, what is it that they are trying to showcase how are they trying to raise funding it's a very interesting show and a lot of learning in a fun way uh, okay learning does not always mean that you have to pick up a book or read a website it could also be an interesting show like shark tank to uh look at now when i focus on finance uh do students understand what finance careers mean i would encourage you to post a few responses students what does it mean to study in a career in finance can i see some responses please Anything they written CA, CA, MBA in finance, MBA. Okay. Right. So oftentimes when we look at careers with regards sorry, to can I add in? There is more. Yes. Uh, there is CS, finance controller, MBA, banking. Perfect. So when we look at all of these, these are the larger terms that we have been exposed to. But are there careers and fields within finance that we may or may not be aware about? Right? Yes, there are chances. Now let me introduce you to something called forensic finance. Okay. Let let me introduce you to something called actuarial science. Let me introduce you to somebody who is more involved with strategy and statistics. Now these are all parts. 
and parcel of the finance culture. Now, when we look at finance, a lot of times people confuse it with accounting and CA. But there is more to it. Every company that functions today has a finance uh, related department, right? So it does not necessarily only mean a CA, but like I focused on forensic finance will include frauds within your company. One of the largest, uh, you know, scopes of, you know, financial fraud is a lot of these uh, websites. You see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, amusement parks that sell. A lot of these aspects involve, uh, you know, in forensic finance and frauds. So I would encourage students to look at the larger uh, scope that exists while finance could be the top of it. There are multiple branches that exist now that didn't exist earlier. So I'd encourage you to go through certain websites. Coursera offers you free courses. Go through that. Enroll for a course. It's self-paced courses that you can explore, right? And it will give you so much more uh, understanding of what all of these careers mean at the comfort of your home and totally free of course now when it comes to arts we often think arts is only going to be drawing painting right but when we look at careers in art there is so much scope to uh, media arts performing arts designing merchandising um, you know fashion designing all of these are including in arts or in a larger scope uh, you know, careers in humanities, there is a lot more to explore than just picking up a pencil, drawing or painting. There is a lot more. Now, just showcasing certain uh, careers, I know we covered very few, but this is just to give you an overview of certain additional careers that we did not necessarily speak about in our quiz, but they exist. And these are important for all of you to know. Okay, next in when we look at commerce, product management, actuaries is what we spoke about, investment banking, corporate psychology, industrial psychology, you know, um, products, so much more. FinTech is an emerging, uh, you know, career option, sustainability. A lot of what, uh, you know, the country is now trying to achieve is. Uh, you know, a goal towards sustainability. How can we improve the environment? You see a lot of hybrid cars that come up and the overall goal is sustainability, right? So what is it that you're trying to focus on from these options? Now, when it comes to careers in arts, um, esports is what we spoke about, content writing, um, you know, social media marketing, filmmaking, all of these are careers that are included in the arts field. Interdisciplinary courses, there is biology and maths, there's going to be finance with engineering, blogging, photojournalism, liberal arts, psychology, okay, law and IT. In fact, I've seen, uh, you know, a keen interest in where people end up doing engineering, followed by law and getting into patenting and law with regards to that. Now, there is multiple options with uh, psychology as well. Earlier, people only looked at psychology as a clinical psychologist where you're looking at therapy, etc. OK, and uh, you have a license to practice. But there is a lot more in recent times that has come up. Now, when you're looking at therapy, there are different aspects of therapy also that exist, right? Now, there is something called color therapy. There is something called art therapy. There is music therapy. There are different ways that different kind of students learn in different environments, different settings. It's important to be mindful and understanding of the kind of situations that may exist. And that encourages you to focus on these kind of careers. Now, when I look at something called music or color therapy, what would it be that, what would be the ideal subject combinations that you would look at? You would look at biology, you would look at art, you would look at psychology. So it's an interdisciplinary course that you're looking at, which will involve a little bit of everything, right? Now, what do you think? I love pro programming and is computer science the only career? We've explored so many more 
options that exist. Yes, programming, learning uh, a language, learning Python is one part of it. But how do you implement that? OK. I want to work and serve people. Which pro profession I should opt for? What do you think, students? What is it? Can some of you post an answer to this question for me? Anybody that has an answer to this? Yes, they're saying law, uh, UPSC. OK. And then someone's asking if you can repeat the question for them, political the science. The question is, uh, no, I want to work and serve people. It's the quest second question on the screen. Which profession should I opt for if I lo love to work and serve people or work with people in different ways? It's an open-ended question where there could be creative answers that could come out. Medicine, army, doctor. OK. IAS. OK. Hospitality industry. Perfect. So those are all great answers. And I agree with all of them being a part of this. Now, one thing that we often tend to forget on, and all the teachers here are going to uh, agree with me, is teaching is a profession not everybody speaks about. If a student is successful in their careers, a lot of it has to do with the school and the learning part of it. Let's not remember that. And let's not forget that teaching is a great career option as well. And what are you going to achieve with teaching? Yes, it is, it is only going to help you reach out to so many more people, right? Working with students on a daily basis. Teaching is one aspect. Career counseling could be another, another aspect. These are generally unexplored by students. So additional to all the answers that all of you gave, can we start thinking about teaching career counseling as lucrative careers? It's something to think about, right? Can vlogging, blogging be a full-time career? Yes, it definitely can be. There is a lot of media influencers, bloggers, bloggers that earn so much on a day-to-day -day basis. They're that gain so much recognition, OK, uh, because of all the great work they're doing. Travel bloggers will give you itineraries, figure out, help you understand what is it that you're trying to achieve from a trip, help you plan that. And that becomes a full-time career option. So yes, it's amazing, but it requires a lot of time, energy, commitment from individuals when they're getting into this. I like playing games. Do I choose games development as a career? We largely spoke about the fact that when you're looking at careers in gaming, I would say also look at the skills behind it. While gaming is something somebody may in get involved with as a leisure activity or just for some fun, maybe one hour a day, you know, get into gaming. I would think gaming at, at the back of it has very important skills. One. If all of your students can sit in the computer, you know, on the TV, computer, whatever, and play games for hours at length, it teaches me one thing that comes to the top of my head is you have a lot of patience to be sitting in one place and doing what you're doing, right? Now, when you're looking at the games, not every game is going to be straightforward. It's going to have strategy involved. What is it that you're trying to do? Even a sportsman that's playing, say a game of soccer, all of you all attended the, you know, watched the FIFA games recently. Now, what is it that, uh, uh, you know, a soccer game involves a lot of strategy, a lot of teamwork, a lot of effort, okay, a lot of energy. So I would say to the larger scheme of things, these are the skills that you have to look at and identify and try and understand what is it that you can combine along with your interests, discoveries, skills, and your uh, career paths, what is it that can merge together and form that career path for you? Tips to consider, explore a number of careers and majors, get involved and interact with working professionals. Now you may uh, ask me, how do you do that, right? Now, ninth and 10th grade is uh, a tad bit early. But yes, there are organizations that allow you to be uh, you know, interning with them. Um, and how are you going to be getting these opportunities? A lot of this, a lot of you are on social media. Make use of the right 
features of social media while it could involve following a university or following a researcher in the field of um, you know your interest doing that is going to be interacting with multiple professionals a key aspect and social media platform that i think is underutilized and can be used for high school students is linkedin now what is linkedin linkedin is essentially a professional platform where you would see a lot of working professionals involved a lot of my students from my previous schools are all on um, linkedin and how, how does a student make use of linkedin profile one they can for there are a number of pages that they have the opportunity to follow individuals they have an opportunity to follow organizations uh, topics that you can follow right so when you're doing this in short you're working towards your interests and your discoveries who knows that today when you start following an individual or an organization and you write to them saying that you know this is what i'm interested in how can i uh, be uh, useful to your organization are there opportunities that exist within you there's a job uh, you know uh, option on linkedin where you can actually search for internships with students now remember internships in india are unpaid because you're not of the legal age to be working and earning a salary for it so if you are going to be an intern at an organization or you're going to shadow somebody or if your parents is, parents have businesses that you can be a part of go to your parents offices and get that experience now when you go to their offices does not mean you go there as your parents child or you go to uh, you know your parents friends company and say you know i'm going to behave like i know the owners of this company or uh, the owners are my parents you have to be working with every person within the team to understand what it is to work in that field it is very easy to think that a career option is going to lead you to the top but everybody starts at the bottom to get there now when you're looking at hospitality careers just because you're doing hospitality or culinary does not mean you're straight going to land up in the kitchen and be a chef and you're going to appear on say master chef judging the competition it takes you a lot to start right from the bottom the way upwards so you are going to end up working in housekeeping you're going to understand what it takes to be a front desk it takes it's going to be a lot to be answering phones so assist these people working professionals interact with them if you know of your siblings or cousins or family members that are working professionals have conversations with them and see what is it that comes out of those conversations and it is going to only help you when you're going to follow through these conversations and do some further research dare to try something new because it is a new time that you are in it is often said that today what you're studying for and what you are working towards careers and fields do not even exist you are going to be uh, you know professionals in a time where a lot of the jobs do not currently exist so you have to be able to have those life skills and be able to prepare yourself to face the future now avoid some of these mistakes uh, i covered a little bit of it do not select a major because it's trending uh and trending could be it could be trending in your friend circle it could be trending in social media it could be trending uh, uh around you okay and uh, there are multiple uh, thing reasons why you should not be doing this because at the end of it if it is not based on your interest you will end up in a career choice which is not necessarily your first choice it does not uh, it is not the right fit for you and in return that you want to end up switching while there's no problem with switching it just takes a little longer than you estimated and that may or may not work for everybody do not assume that you have it all figured out i don't think even at this age i have it all figured out it is important to understand that seeking help and guidance is only going to take you a step further in the right direction okay now uh, paul has already spoken about uh, you know all the features i just want to highlight a few more as students that you can use now there is a very very important feature on cr4 called notes now what does this essentially do it acts like any other note 
note-taking platform that you use. All of us use one computer or the other. There is Google Keeps. There is uh, notes on your iPhones, your laptops that you take notes in. Now, when you have information in multiple places, oftentimes you don't know where to find it. Now, CIFO is that platform that has all of this housed in one location. You can create a note for yourself if there is a website, if there is a course, if there is something interesting you found, and you want to create a note to not forget it or lose that piece of information. All you have to do is create a note from the platform, okay? And it will ask you for a title, it will ask you for a description, and then you can add whatever you want, including web links. You can hyperlink the links, everything. Now, surveys, oftentimes, if there are surveys that your school is sending out, this will this is an equivalent to a Google form, essentially. OK, so remember, if the school has any surveys for you, they can send them out to you through the surveys feature on CIFO. Task list has already been covered by Paul. Now, starting grade 9 and 10, um, there are these tasks that can be assigned to you by the school. You can assign yourself some create self tasks, and all the tasks will appear on your profile under the tasks and assessments tab. And as soon as you're done, you you know, as soon as you're working on it, there are different ways you can say in progress, completed. Can you see the different options here? Done is highlighted in green, in progress is orange, and not started appears in gray. So you can select what it is that currently exists for you or what stage of the task you are on. Events has already been covered. I would encourage you to make the most of it. Not uh, every um, uh, you know university is going to always be accessible. So even if uh, there is a completed session, I would encourage you to you know go through the past recordings. There is a way you can connect with the universities. Do that. This is only to help you further understand and help you make that informed decision towards your career choices. So thank you very much. This is all that I had to talk about. And uh, now over to uh, Ma'am to take on the questions that are there from the students that we can answer. Sure, sure. Thank you so much uh, for this amazing talk on the career. I think this was really helpful. It was so interesting for me also to understand these new age careers. I'm sure the students are very well versed, but your parents, your parents must have gotten a nice idea about how these new age careers can be brought up uh, into your career, uh, you know, the, the list that you've made of career choices that you'd like to make. Well, students, we you can start posing questions, posting questions, if any, I'm going to take up the questions that were put in the first half as well. But before I go on to that, um, with all that, both of them, Mr. Paul and Ms. Janvi, have briefed about. It's our time to take the benefit of this. Let me give you a quick understanding of how we used to go ahead with career platforms before. It was a paid thing for each student at the age of, uh, at the grade eight and at the grade 10, that they would take career assessments, aptitude tests, and the career counseling would be paid by the students. But this time, we're very fortunate and we're very. Um, thankful to the management who has done or has taken care of that and sponsored this for our students. So grade nine and grade 10 students make the best use of this. You have this facility very almost in your hands here and on your fingertips that you can actually access and make the right choice of career that you wish to um, take up ahead. Any confusions that you have can be clarified by the three tests that were described by Mr. Paul. Also, uh, what uh, Ms. Janvi has discussed with us here today has given you an idea and left you with more questions, I'm sure. So do clarify those here. Uh, do have an interaction here right now with the questions, but even if that's not clarified here, you have Cialfo uh, help as a chat um, on the portal. Log into that and take or make the best use of that too. So again, we're going ahead with questions here. Uh, let us see what we have. I a few questions. To, and yes. Please, please. I also want to encourage the parents. Uh, parents, like uh, ma'am said, that a lot of these times did not exist when you were in school, college. These opportunities were not there. How, how many of you sitting in the audience today really feel that, um, you know, things could have been different for you only if you had the right guidance at that age? 
right uh, forget uh, only you know say 40 years ago uh, or 50 years ago I, in most recent times i know i didn't graduate very long ago right uh, even when i was in school just in 2003 and i did not have a career counselor in school right so it's not uh, a very old phenomena to have these but now that schools are realizing the value i think it's great that the school offers this and remember it is not of any charge to the students right so make them you most of this like every aspect explore it parents and students and you know like paul said um if all of you consent to receiving your uh, you know login details the logins for parents can be created as well where you would be able to track everything but remember parents i just want to remind you that um this is the student's journey while you can help them understand certain concepts it's the student that needs to drive this process for them right you could be uh, involved at decision making aspects uh, help them understanding gaining you know professional experiences but unless the student is driven and is driving this process um you know they're not going to get that much out of it okay so i encourage students and parents to now come up with questions i also have a team member mega from my team she's a counselor in the counseling team so um, uh, again if you guys have any specific questions uh, that i direct to mega i would uh, ask her to answer a few as well since she's here and she understands uh, uh, very well what students are uh, you know uh, uh, expecting she herself has been uh, not a very uh, you know old graduate so she can answer some of your questions and well so now you have three resources uh, at your disposal to answer these questions so go ahead yes we'll go ahead with the questions we had one question with the btech engineering if there is a six year integrated course that is recommended that's the question that parent has asked okay so uh, when you look at uh, you know the integrated courses one there are very limited institutions that offer an integrated course okay a few that i can at the top of my head think of is a few of uh, uh, nmims offers it and a few others right now when you look at these integrated courses i want you to you know ask yourself this question what is it that you're trying to achieve by this course why the integration why five years right okay and the reason for that is one according to me if i was a student in the current time and i had to pick uh, you know an engineering course versus an integrated course the one benefit i would see is reducing the time right but also remembering that i would be committed to one institution for five years now according you know, according to me, as an individual choice, I would prefer to build a larger network in varied institutions and locations, right? It gives you a thought, uh, different thought process. But again, this could be valid for people like me that want different experiences. Now, if you are the kind that already knows what you want to do and want to go in, or uh, in and all out for your integrated program, it's okay to do so. There's nothing wrong in it. But also remember, then opting out of the integrated course becomes a challenge. Right. I think that uh, explains how integrated courses can be selected if they have to. Um, the next question, I think we can take it. We'll make the most important questions here today since we uh, want to there. And, and we can always ask these questions when we are on the portal. The next one is, could you please suggest some international education that is valid globally? Uh, would you like to answer this? So I think that's a very broad question, if you ask me. Uh, now, when you look at overseas education, I want you to remember a couple of things. There are certain various pathways that you can use to study internationally. One is the obvious choice that students explore is the undergraduate uh, you know pathway now what students have to do for that is post your grade you know after grade 12 is when you're going to go overseas but when you want to work towards going overseas for your uh, education in undergraduate you have to start working as early as grade 9 right so planning the country planning uh, um, you know what is it that you're trying to achieve from that location a lot of times students want to 
end up living in that particular country for a couple of years um, you know before coming back sometimes people want to go again an international experience but come back to the family business okay that is the undergraduate pathway now it is completely okay to uh, be completing your undergraduate studies in india there are a lot of new age universities that are upcoming that have a great uh, you know a pathway for you and it's it, it's it's a myth right now that only overseas education can land you a great job okay i'm the biggest example of that i haven't got educated abroad i've i've been in india as in my introduction ma'am covered i've been a mumbai university student i start you know did a distance learning course at symbiosis and i've had a great pathway right so it's completely okay i feel a lot of times people feel that peer pressure to want to go overseas and study but uh, you know parents at some point feel that maybe her kids are too young and that's okay it's completely okay to complete your uh, you know undergraduate course here go for your masters or work for a couple of years after your undergraduate and go for an mba overseas okay remember it is what you make out of your student experience that matters rather than the tag of the university name okay you could be in stanford and you could be not enjoying the course and you could not be doing well but you could be in india at an nmims doing exceedingly well topping the university and making a fabulous experience out of it right so it's completely okay i know of a student in my past experience that had an offer from a leading us university which is babson for entrepreneurship which is a law it is a very popular career choice that students these days want to explore versus london school of economics now both great names okay it was a dilemma because their learning styles were different countries were different outcomes were different the student went on to study at london school of economics successfully completed a course okay got admission into imm the bad post london school of economics deferred his admission for one year to gain one year experience and then ended up doing his master so he took that gap he took that risk so every student's journey is different please decide what is it that you are trying to achieve okay so international education in short is a lot of avenues for you right very well said and uh, definitely whether you choose international studies or you choose something in india it's the skill that you're building it's the student's experience that's the most important thing i also Which want to just bring up a yes, point please. where there has been a new order that has passed in the recent times and you can catch mm -hmm. this in the last few days newspaper where universities abroad will now be able to start a campus in india oh, wow. this was earlier not allowed okay mm -hmm. and now universities have been encouraged and that option is now available so in the next couple of years you will see universities overseas setting up campuses here in fact the iits and sp jain and all of these have global mm -hmm. campuses also so just saying india is no longer a backup i think i think it's harder to get into universities in india than it is in overseas india, so no. it's a myth that i'd like to bust that india is a backup it's not anymore true true so which which means we're also exploring universities in india on the portal you can also look at the industry right. or sorry universities outside india but uh, right. we are very much uh, open to both of these sides Absolutely. okay i'll go to the next question any career options that you can share about in sports right i think i love that question and it's one career i love talking about because i used to be a very good um, athlete in school uh, a sports enthusiast through and through so i think i spent most of my founding years following some sport or the other whether it was playing it or watching it and learning so much from it so uh, when you look at careers in sport a lot of times people only look at sports as being a sportsman going joining a sports team and play i don't think that's the only part and i love that mega has now come on screen i'm going to talk a little bit and then transfer the question to my mega as well but sports management is a great career option sports and exercise science sports nutrition sports coaching 
sports media sports broadcasting sports presenting okay so what is it that goes into a match that you watch on uh, or on your screen it's not only players playing there are companies that pitch to get the broadcasting rights and the marketing rights right there is a lot of money that goes into the fifa world cup for example i'm giving that example because it was the most recent large event that has impacted everybody okay there are sponsors for the events right there are strategists that are behind this there is a financial team so you name it and every person can have a career in sports but it, what is it that you are trying to achieve out of your career in sports is it that you want to end up playing for a particular team if yes sports nutrition sports physiotherapy uh, is something that you can look at again remember fitness is very important so fitness nutrition if these are not part of your day to day life then it impacts you as an athlete so to, you know keep these things in mind when you're trying to build a career in sports and over to megha for a quick second megha can you tell us about uh, the interesting opportunities of combining sports and psychology because i don't think students understand that and uh, i'm sure megha has a lot to add about that Mega, you're muted. Right. Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah, hi, uh, everybody. Um, thanks for joining and staying on for uh, such an informative session. And thanks, Janvi, for uh, including me uh, to have an opportunity to add the content. Uh, well, sports psychology is something which is um, a blooming career right now. Why? Because there are so many sports happening and not just limited to say state level or national level now the sports in india including sports like kabaddi have been played on international scale so that's something which definitely has a lot of scope going further we will see more of india in sports representing india at different levels and with that comes the responsibility um, on indian team players of each sport which require that kind of mentorship uh, that kind of guidance, not just limited to improving their game, improving you know uh, the sports coach guidance, but it's also uh, required for them to have a uh, good uh, mental stability. You know, their mental well-being is equally important because there have been stages when, say, uh, Virat Kohli didn't do very well, or th there can be times when uh, you know um, some other team member played extensively well and the other um, just got out on maybe the very first ball, right? It is absolutely possible to have that kind of uh, experiences and it is very much important to, um, you know, ensure that you are there as a team player, not there as an individual and you do not forget that maybe, uh, you know, it should not impact your game in your second innings then. Because that's something which really counts. Because you, when you go and play, you play for India. It's not anymore going to be uh, for, say, your school level or your state level. It's eventually, the game power is going to increase. And with that comes the responsibility of a sports psychologist who can definitely help uh, you know, team players fail better and do better in front of the games uh, at different international levels too. Thank you for adding, Minga. I also want to just bring uh, a very important point for uh, uh, students and parents here, that when we look at sports and when you're looking at being an athlete or playing sport professionally, that is one aspect of what you want to achieve. But it is also important to have a backup when you're looking at playing a particular sport professionally. The reason I say that is the cardio or the sportsman is as good as their health and well-being and nutrition levels, right? If there is an injury, it's going to be the end of a person's career, okay? Uh, and injuries are very, very common in sport. I know of a person now, and I don't want to name that person, is associated with a university, works in the education sector, and... Can you believe he was uh, in the Ranji Trophy for cricket? He was selected to play for one of the IPL teams professionally a couple of years ago. 
but just before his induction to the IPL team, and he was to start in a month or two, okay, just before that, he had a severe spine injury that made him ineligible to play for the rest of his life. He lost that ability to play. So I'm not trying to discourage you, but if you're looking at uh, professionally playing a sport, always remember that it has a shelf life. So you want to try and keep another uh, career option. So now when you look at Saurav Ganguly or when you look at uh, all of these people, they were all cricket players. Today they are influencers. They are in a lot of advertisements. Okay, A lot of them are into commentary. So there are alternate career options that open for you, but you have to be open for it yourself. Like adapting to that is something if you're not open to that, that becomes a hindrance and a problem. Yes, I agree. I think that's a very thoughtful uh, note to make for all the parents and students because I, I understand all parents do keep telling their children the same. And uh, regardless of if you want to take a field in sports, you have to make sure that other areas, academics, is taken care of because a career uh, requires assistance of these other skills as well. Okay, we'll move to a few more questions that we have. Thank you, parents and students waiting for so long. I know we have taking a longer time but everyone is so interested and they're there to uh, listen to it further on which means it's really going nice and i could i'm also re receiving a lot of information uh, from the counselors here okay the next question that we can take is um, about robotics and engineering any information on that that you could provide so yes robotics engineering uh, you know yes there is a lot of careers associated with it right now uh, I just want to make sure you understand what you're getting into. Now, it's no more about uh, just building a product and, you know, doing things. Now, I would encourage you to go to this particular website and all of you all can make a note of it. It's called Plaksha University. Okay, so Plaksha University. And actually, if you give me one second, I can just take a quick second and show you the website on the screen. So Plaksha University is a private university in, in Punjab. And what they say is their tagline is redefining tech education. OK, I just want you to understand that there is no long, there are, uh, you know, earlier there were very limited courses offered in engineering. But this is a university that offers new age career options. Robotics and cyber physical systems is one of them biological systems engineering data science economics and business computer science and artificial intelligence i would encourage you to go through some of these websites okay when when you ask for careers in robotics so what is it that robotics involves i uh, i would say reading some of these things is very important okay now when you look at robotics oftentimes people feel that it is only about learning all these coding languages or coding something but coding is one part of it what is the outcome that you're trying to achieve yes you've learned 10 or 10 programming languages or whatever you're an expert but are you trying to solve a problem are you trying to achieve something okay so think of all these things plaksha in fact offers a summer course for students in this age group so you know you can explore that option there are other universities in india that offer this uh, there are other universities overseas that offer it right so there are these um, you know options that are available uh, to students to explore uh, summer courses i would say and uh, you know online courses do that so that you have a deeper understanding before you decide on what kind of engineering that you want to do okay fair that looks nice uh we can go ahead with one two more questions uh, to conclude then data sciences and cloud computing if any information on that can be provided in brief maybe so on data science uh Megha, do you want to take that question yeah sure go ahead uh, so data science and cloud computing uh, are the new trends we would say now that majority companies have shifted and moved to a truly uh, global and digital experience with digital India, uh, they have understood the power that uh, you know AI and machine learning has in them. 
and it's not that cloud computing is going to work uh, you know in isolation it's like everything works parallelly to each of these digital experiences and together forms uh, the cloud computing experience uh, now cloud computing has given the power to companies to capture data and re, uh, you know store it uh, for um, you know a uh, very long length and ensure that uh, the data is updated because it's also powered by ai and ml technologies which is it keeps on updating and refreshing uh, from day to day time apart from that uh, you know if we talk about the uh, you know uh, financial technology as well these companies where uh, you know such as paytm or google pay all of these have their own uh, like online uh, payment systems also uh, em embodied which work with in support of cloud computing too so uh, it's a total uh, you know cluster of things because if you sign up for a course in cloud computing it's not just going to be cloud computing you will be learning um, you know different uh, concepts which uh, together can you know uh, improve the experience of um, companies using the cloud computing as a base for uh, working on this technology also just adding to what mega said remember we all were in a covid situation not so long ago okay so everything that we didn't imagine existed is now all digitized right none of us uh, imagined teaching and learning online everybody thought it's a very physically uh, you know involved career but now when you look at it so much has evolved so much has changed right all of these are just going to add to being ready for the future okay so when it comes to cloud computing computer science all of these careers will make you future ready and of course there's others as well right yes that uh, that's lovely that's good information i think uh, some more questions here especially about uh, aerodynamics or being pilot if you can touch upon these two right now right so being a pilot again uh, there are a couple of things and there are a couple of layers involved to being a pilot okay it it comes across as a very fancy and lucrative career option because you see this person in an aircraft uh, you know in, in the cockpit and it comes across as very appealing right but when you look at being a pilot there is multiple layers to it before that comes in do you know that there is a thorough medical examination that's required do you know there's a thorough eye testing that's required if you do not pass these medical tests and your eyesight test you technically cannot qualify to be a pilot so you may be able to study towards it but if you lack any of these it's not going to take you in the right direction and it will not let you reach your ultimate goal so medical fitness and uh, you know eyesight play a very very important role how many of you thought i have thought about that so let's let's leave that thought with all of you great career option you will need your sciences and math right uh, you can study it in india you can study overseas there's multiple avenues but yes you have to remember these two points to keep in mind and uh, mega do you have anything to add yeah sure i would like to just add to this that uh, even automotive design is one of the interesting uh, subject for students interested in product designing of these aircraft and if that's something which really interests you then possibly a career in product design a career in automotive design is a good great choice but it really uh, requires you to have that design aptitude to kind of uh, you know uh, go ahead and um, be interested but uh, it also doesn't mean that you will not require science and math because this goes without saying because there are technical aspects to designing an aircraft which requires you to have that uh, conceptual uh, ability in terms of sciences and math and design so it's a definitely a lucrative opportunity for those who are interested in these subjects equally right so okay. remember the subjects uh, selection very very important and key in deciding to be a pilot fitness medical health i cite some aspects to consider okay yes i was just coming to that that uh, while we are discussing all these career options i'm going to go back with that part that we discussed in the first half which is taking these tests so students it's important and now it's time 
that you take these personality tests, the multiple intelligence tests, and the learning outcomes test so that you can um, know if your aptitude and eligibility or, and read up about these courses as well. So on the on the portal, you understand that your eligibility matches and what courses you need to do so that your eligibility matches the career option that you want to take up. I think with that, um, a, a little bit of more information that I'd like to give and then thank the, the speakers as well. It was a brilliant session. I was enjoying thoroughly while listening to all the options that you're sharing. So here, a quick note about registration for all of these students. A registration link is going to be sent to your school email IDs. It's and will be sent for, sooner. Yes. Yeah, it's already been sent just now. So it's already I, sent. Okay. I saw a few, few of the parents asking about the registration link that has right, been shown right. to all the students of all the three branches. They can check out their school student school email id because we have created the login credentials on the student school email id so that should have been there in the inbox right now if not available in the inbox request them to check with the spam folders as permission holders and still there is any challenges the school individual students can reach out to the school counselors and we will be able to help them out a quick information here too um, if you could help them with the year of graduation that they have to put for grade 9 and grade 10 so uh, yes, as I mentioned, uh, for the grade tenth, it will be twenty twenty five the graduation year, and for grade ninth, it would be twenty twenty six their graduation year. So make sure whenever you are entering the informations for graduation year, I'm repeating for grade all grade ten students currently their graduation year would be twenty twenty five, and for the ninth standard would be twenty twenty six. I hope that gives you an answer. Yeah, this is very important, students, because as soon as you click on activating your account, uh, it will then ask you these steps. And if you type them wrong, then all the tests that we give you will not reflect there. So make sure you put these dates correctly. Not only, not only that, get back. Correct. I mean, there are hmm. uh, courses whenever they're if they're looking for any particular courses in the new university, yes. the deadline would be shown according to the graduation year that has been selected. So that is the reason why it is very important to choose the right uh, graduation year. Correct. Makes sense. Yes. So uh, please make a note of that and do it that way. Um, it is preferred if you do this through your laptops or desktops. If not, then try it from your phone, but preferably uh, try it from the desktop or laptop. It will be the best uh, platform to use. Um, also, after the registration, the school counselor will open your test, but please do your logins first. So we can see all of you logging in all your all the respective branches school counselors will look into it and you can get back to them for any questions that you have i think with that i'd really like to from the bottom of my heart thank the team of cl for year who has imparted who have imparted the, the knowledge and information that our students really required right now at this point of time also the inclusion of the of the, the you know, new careers coming up was a great help for parents to get an insight of uh, these careers and how to make their pathways ahead. I'm sure you all are still available for all these students whenever they require, and you can seek help through us uh, towards to the entire team of Cialpo. Thank you so much, parents and students, for taking our time and being here. It's been long that you're here and you're sticking around to look through the program. It's amazing to see that you're interested in knowing further. Do log in. I'm sure you'll have lots of doubts and questions after that. So we will be there to answer those as well. Thank you so much, all of you. I close this session for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank it was it was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mega, for coming in.